YouTube with you. So I've got a couple of things that I've been wanting to do for a while and I've recently had a delivery of some new fabrics. So if you've watched some of my videos before, especially my styling one when I was styling my media unit, you will have seen that before I have done some like fabric decoupage books. I wanted to do some but more of an autumnal theme. So I've been to the charity shop this morning and I've picked up a couple of books and I'm going to do some autumnal fabric decoupage but I'm going to do it with you and then you can kind of see how I do it because I'm aware that last time I did it I shared it on YouTube I mean not YouTube I shared it on Instagram so you will have seen if you follow me on Instagram you will have seen it over there but if you're just a YouTuber then you will have seen how I do it so I thought I would share it with you <laughs> I'm just going to show you the books that I picked up basically just so you can get an idea. So what I look for when I go to the charity shop, like all these are like £2-ish I think. But I look at the actual cover, um, hardback cover without the sleeve on it. Just so I can get like some neutral kind of books without much print on it. So then it doesn't disturb the fabric and show the print through it. So some of these are a little bit darker. But again, it's all the kind of same vibe with just maybe something on the spine and the rest completely blank. If you do have books already, you can maybe just pre-paint them. So you can just cover them in like a whitewash paint or something like that, just so it kind of doesn't show the print or whatever it is on the book through the fabric. Why does it do this at the time I want to film? Like, I hope that's not too noisy. So annoying. Okay, so these are the beautiful fabrics that I picked up. These are all from Etsy. So I've got this beautiful wheatgrass one. And then I got a pumpkin one, which is so lovely. And then I got these because I just love to mix a print one just with a um, neutral kind of plain fabric. So I got this pack of just autumnal colours from Etsy as well. So I'll link all the fabrics that I am using down in the description box also. Then you'll just need some Mod Podge. You can get this off Amazon. I got mine on Amazon and it came with a pack of three of these, which are, make it really easy to apply the Mod Podge with. Then some fabric scissors or just normal scissors and then a little pokey stick. I just used like a cuticle pusher. Just anything you've got lying around the house that will help poke through into the spine, the fabric into the spine. You'll see once I come down to that section what might work and what won't work what you have lying around the house. So I'm just going to pop down like an old tea towel or something just for the glue just so it doesn't go all over my new dining table and then I'm just gonna get my first book so I think I'm gonna do one of the print fabrics on this one because it's a little bit darker and um, so what I might do is I think this wheatgrass one is a little thicker fabric so I'm gonna use this wheatgrass one first so you just want to lay down your fabric and pop your book on top and then what you want to do is open it up and you want to cut around the edge, leaving about an inch worth gap around each side of the fabric. Then just popped some of the Mod Podge into a little dish just so that I can get the sponge in there because this sponge is a little too wide for the actual tub of Mod Podge. So you want to start down on the spine. So you just want to make sure you completely saturate the spine in Mod Podge. It doesn't need to be really thick and make sure you just get in the nooks and crannies too and then just completely spread the Mod Podge out so you've not got any lumps and bumps of Mod Podge on it like that 
and then just place it back so again leaving an inch worth gap around the outside just place it down to the one side of the fabric and then lift the other side up and over the book and then just press down the fabric onto the spine make sure you're pulling the fabric nice and tight then when you've done that just open up the fabric and just cover the top side of the book in Mod Podge completely cover it and make sure you're getting in all this little nook of the book too where the spine meets the front cover and then just pull back over the fabric make sure you're pressing down into the creases and press down the fabric flat you'll also notice that all the creases of the fabric kind of disappear then once you press the fabric out so there's no need to iron the fabric or anything if it is slightly creased because these will disappear when you apply the fabric to the mop fudge and then you want to flip over and do the same on the back and completely cover this side of the book in Mod Podge. And again, pressing it down but smoothing it out and pulling it tight and making sure you're getting down that crease of the book. Then in the spine, here you want to make two slits, meet where the spine starts <laughs> i'm really bad at explaining things but where this down here where the spine is make two slits up there i'll show you what i've done so like so two little slits okay the same width as the spine and then you want to do two up to that little cut line you also don't want to cut right up to the spine if you can Okay, and then you want to make two little cuts there. So you get these two triangles, okay? And then a little flap of material for the spine. And then you want to do the same on the other side. So when I was showing you how I did the read book, I kind of recorded it wrong. Well, like not recorded it wrong, but did it wrong. So I would re-record when I'm doing this one. Basically just pop a little bit of Mod Podge onto this corner. onto each corner and then you fold over the corner inwards as like a right angle creating that diagonal line there so you don't get any exposed fabric on the corners of the book and then you want to mod podge the top Make sure you get into that little crease of the fabric as well with your mod podge and that sticks down also and then fold it over and make sure you pull it over nice and tightly do the same with the bottom making sure you get the mod podge on the top of that fabric as well to do this side and then you want to get into both creases of the fabric and fold that over and then you want to just apply Mod Podge to the full cover of the book make sure you get in that crease Close the book and press down into the cover. And you just want to carry.
carry on with the tabs and I'll jump back to the wheatgrass book. Then the final thing, this is where you will need your stick, is to make sure you open the book a little bit so that it opens up the spine of the book and then just push that fabric down into the spine of the book. Same on the other side, so just open it up a little bit to create that gap for you to push the fabric down inside the book. And then that is your book all covered. How much nicer does that look? And it makes the perfect styling book. Just to bring you in a little closer, I also got all these from Etsy too, which are beautiful autumnal little stickers on craft paper. And I absolutely adore them. And I think this one is perfect for this book. So I might pop one of these on with a little autumnal quote as well. They are just stickers, but I don't know whether to mod podge over the top of them. But we'll see, we'll stick them down and see what they look like. Yeah, I really love how that has turned out. How beautiful is that? I'm gonna finish off the rest of the books and then I will be back and I'll show you how they all turned out. to show you the finished book that I did so this is the wheatgrass one and again you saw me do this from start to finish so absolutely love the stickers that I've chose to put on here this fabric is just so stunning and perfect for autumn as well but it's just so classic and classy I think I just love this one I think this one's my favorite actually and then to go with that, I did this just plain green one and I put um, just one of the little stickers down the spine. I just think that's so cute. It says, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers, which is so cute. And then I thought them two would look lovely paired together on the shelf, probably that way around. So then you can see the front cover of that like that. How cute do they look together? And then the other two were the pumpkin one so on the pumpkin one i've popped on the pumpkin sticker and then another little quote saying autumn carries more gold in its pockets than all the other seasons i just think that's so cute and then just another plain one and i've just popped on a little acorn sticker on that one so yeah they are just so cute i thought they would look nice together as well as a pair i quite like books to be sat as a pair together so loved those so definitely give those a try if you've got some old books lying around or just if you fancy some little cheap kind of decor box that you've done yourself it's always better when you've done something yourself isn't it as well yeah i hope you enjoyed that little um craft as well so let me know in the comments if you think you're gonna give this a go and or if you've already done so if you've done it before so yeah let me know. My next little craft DIY. I'm gonna be upcycling these lamps that I got from the charity shop. And I've got some shades from H&M. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the browning wax hack on them to make them look wooden. Um, so these were like four pounds, I think. Yeah, four pounds from the charity shop. 
which is an absolute bargain. So I'm going to use the French Chic Creme de la Creme and then I'm going to use the French Chic Browning Wax to give it that wooden look. So I've just painted the lamp and none of it filmed but basically just make sure you go all in the same direction with the brush as because we want it to look like wood make sure it's going all in the same direction and using a brush as well kind of creates that kind of line you would get in a wood grain so make sure you do use a brush as opposed to using a sponge if you want to just get all the paint on there and then when you've finished just go over it and make sure all the paint texture and white brush lines are running in the same direction and then we just need to wait for this to dry and then once this is dry we can go in with our browning wax so now that's dried you want to grab the um, browning wax and a little brush and literally this is how much I've used I've done so it's a bit dark isn't it sorry you probably can't see but yeah I'm not using much make you don't need much on the brush at all you just want to again go in the same direction and just brush that browning wax onto the lamp start quite thin if you want to deepen the color a little bit if you want a bit of a darker wood look then you can always go in with a second coat but just do small thin coats of the browning wax So once you've kind of applied all the browning wax, again, just make sure you take your time in going over it and making sure all the lines you get from the brush are running in the same direction going downwards like a wood grain would go. And then just make sure you're happy with the finish especially getting into all those little crevices if you've got a lamp similar style to this which has a little lip then make sure all that is also running in the same direction if you do want this to look a little bit darker you can then go ahead and leave this to dry and then do the same again and repeat this step and just go over with the browning wax again but I like this kind of white washed almost quite light wood look so this is the one I've just finished and I just love how these turn out so they just have the most beautiful like white washed kind of wood effect and they just look so much better than the yellowy cream color they were before so yeah i'm just gonna pop these now these are gonna be my new bedside lamps and i've got some beautiful linen scalloped h&m home lampshades to go on them i've already done one of these before i just wanted to see how it worked out before i shared the little diy hack with you and so i'll pop i'll leave this one to dry and then i'll pop the other one in the bedroom and i'll show you what it looks like with the h&m lampshade so this is how it now looks with the lampshade on which i am just so thrilled with i'm so happy the base just looks so beautiful and yeah it's just one of my favorite upcycles yet and these lampshades are just stunning from h&m if they still do them i think they've actually released them in a white very recently as well rather than this like beigey color 
and they are just the perfect lampshade for those lamps. I'm so thrilled with it. It looks so beautiful. I just thought I'd do a quick video as well just to show you what it looks like without the light on. Just so you can see it in like natural daylight with the shade. I just think it's just stunning. That shade is just everything. They are just perfect. So whilst we're on like a crafty DIY kind of vlog, I thought I would share these. These actually got delivered today and they're from a small business called Pickles and Pudding. And I will link these below. These are handmade and I got two signs. One that says Hello Pumpkin, so you can choose your colour. You can also choose whether you want this to be a straight edge or a scalloped edge. And then you can choose your design on as well. So she has all these kind of for nurseries and stuff. But I got this Hello Pumpkin one. You can also choose the colour of the lettering, I believe, too. So very personalised. Very, very personalised. And I think these were like £5 each, something like that. So I thought that was very reasonable as well. I'm just going to hang this up on one of my little peg shelves. I think this was the colour Stone or something like that. I can't quite remember. And then I got this one to hang out on my wreath out front for Halloween. And I chose a slightly deeper, darker colour of brown so i think this was like called chocolate something like that and again this was five pounds and just absolutely love that to hang out just to make sure the trick-or-treaters know that they can come knocking on our door when it comes to the 31st of october and another little diy thing i thought i would share with you is these little diffuser bottles now i saw this hack on lydia millen on a youtube channel and I just thought it was such a good idea. I've never thought of just buying a bulk load of glass bottles before and making my own diffusers with like just refills. So you can buy a pack of 16 of these green glass bottles. They also do them in a clear glass and they also do them in like an amber brown glass as well. So depending on what your kind of colour scheme is, I just loved this green one. The green one is also what um, L Lydia Millen had got and I'm just loving green at the minute so I just thought they were just beautiful and they're kind of like an apothecary style glass vase as well. You can also use these as bud vases too, you don't have to just use them as diffuser bottles. They were 16 for £25.99. I think the clear ones might be a little bit more expensive but like 29.99 something like that and then i bought these reeds in the brown shade i don't know if you can tell that they're brown and um, but yeah they do these in all different colors as well if you wanted a different color but um the brown shade but i think for a pack of 100 were nine pounds 98 so to get the if you got the 16 pack of these and you added the reed diffusers in for the cost of them both, if you used to divide it by 16, it'd be about £2.25 a bottle. So I think that's really reasonable. And then you can put whatever scent in it you like. If you wanted to be a bit extra bougie, you could also like make some labels or get some labels for the front of them. Make them look a bit more expensive, but I just love them just as they are. And I think they do look like really expensive as well. And you can get quite a lot of diffuser oil in there so they last they will last for ages so yeah i just thought i would share that little hack with you as well just in case you love a re-diffuser and just want to kind of do a bulk close you can either give them away as little gifts or you can yeah use them as bud vases if you don't want 16 diffusers around your house but i love my house smelling nice so i just thought that was something i could share with you that i saw on youtube and i thought it was a great idea so i will link both the reeds and the diffuser bottles down in the description as well. So that's everything I wanted to share with you this week in this week's kind of crafty DIY YouTube video. But if you enjoyed this type of video, I know a lot of you have been looking forward to the crafty one. So if you liked what I did and shared with you, then please leave a like and a comment down below in the description box. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any notifications or any more of my youtube videos to come so thank you for watching do let me know as well which kind of 
crafty DIY you preferred more? Did you really like the lamps? Did you like the books? I've also got a, another one to share with you, which will be like a Cox and Cox um, frame dupe. I decided I didn't want to do that as well in this video. I thought we'll leave that for another time. And then because this video might just drag on and I don't want you to be sat there for ages kind of watching me just do all these DIYs. So yeah, we'll leave that for another time. Make sure you come back for that one as well if you enjoyed these. And just, yeah, thank you so much for watching and coming back if you come back week on week to watch me. I am so grateful. So thank you. And I shall see you again next week. Mm -hmm.